I want to look tonight at God's timing. Does God let man know when he's going to do things? And I want to look at beginning in Daniel chapter 9. And we'll read verses 1 and 2. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel said he understood by books. Well, how do you understand a book? You have to read it. So Daniel was reading the book of the of Jeremiah the prophet, and he understood 70 years had to be accomplished. Now, where do you read that? Well, let's just flip back here in Jeremiah chapter number 25. Jeremiah wrote down in the book that is given to his name, and notice here in verse number 11 and 12 of chapter five, or chap, chapter 25, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon, and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and I will make it perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now, God spelled it right out, 70 years. Now, that isn't hard to understand. It's clear, it's surface stuff, 70 years are determined. And Daniel understood that. And then God revealed to Daniel many other things as far as timing of things in Daniel chapter 9. And verse number 25, or let's go back to verse 24. He says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So there's a lot of things that are going on and being fulfilled there. You can see those things highlighted in orange. But notice 70 weeks. Now, you think 70 weeks, you think 52 weeks in a year, and 70 would be a little more than a year. But this is not meaning 70 weeks. It's 70 sevens. It's 70 times 7 years. So we have 7 days in a week. So 70 times 7 is 490 years is what was determined. Now, if you don't believe that, you can study it out on your own. You'll find out down in verse 25 where it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. Now, you see... On the side there, I have written Ezra 1, 1 and 2, and Nehemiah 2, 1 through 6. And that's when King Cyrus gave the commandment for them to go and to rebuild Jerusalem. And it was exactly 483 years until Messiah the Prince came and rode the, the donkey into Jerusalem. So there's 69 weeks, notice seven weeks and three score and two weeks with a score is 20, three score is 60. So 62 and seven is 69. So we have 70 weeks. So we have one seven left. And over in chapter nine, verse 27, it tells us about that remaining week, which is seven years. Verse 27, and he, now this is talking about the beast, the Antichrist, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, 
I guess I'd be more correct in saying the man of sin, because the man of sin midway through the, the seven-year period here, which is known as Daniel's 70th week, he then claims himself to be God, and that's when he becomes the son of perdition. So the he here would actually be the man of sin. He's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week, so seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice over the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So here we see clearly that there's a seven-year period coming in the future, and three and a half years into that, this one who makes the covenant is going to break the covenant in the midst of that, and he's going to commit what Jesus said is the abomination of desolation. And even reminded people, we can turn back into Matthew 24, and Jesus reminded the Jews, and Matthew 24 is written to the Jews. In verse number 15, Jesus said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. And then he goes on and gives them instructions what they should do. Now this is a time that Jesus calls great tribulation. Great tribulation is going to come upon these people. Now this is, again, Daniel's 70th week, halfway through is when the abomination of desolation takes place. So we know there remains three and a half years until Christ comes after that. So we can look many places in the New Testament it records about that time. I'm going to flip back to 2 Thessalonians. And 2 Thessalonians tells about that one who, in verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So this is the midpoint of that tribulation period that's coming, Daniel's 70th week. Many people want to criticize if you call the full seven years the tribulation period. But for sure, great tribulation is the last three and a half years. Now, we know the abomination of desolation is the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week. And Revelation, if I flip back to Revelation 12, you will see in Revelation 12, in verse number 6, it talks about, the woman, and this is Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So that's one thousand two hundred and sixty days, or three and a half years is what it comes down to. You also see in that chapter also, in verse number 14, the Bible says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. So a time, this is a time is one year. So one year and times, that would be two years, so that'd be one and two is three and a half a time, three and a half years. And God is going to protect Israel in Petra, I believe it is, where he will protect them from the dragon. So we have not only it's 1,203 score days given, but a time and times and a half time, all of them add up to three and a half years. Back in Revelation chapter number 11 and verse number 2, the Bible says, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. So forty and two months. And notice in verse 3, it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So we have three and a half years, forty-two months in Verse 2, we have the 1,260 days in verse 3. So everything lines up with three and a half years. So God is spelling out the exact time. 
He gave the exact time when Jesus Christ would come. The 69 weeks of Daniel, 69 times 7, 483 years from the time that Cyrus gave the commandment to go rebuild Jerusalem until the coming of Messiah would be 483 years. And it was fulfilled to the very day. Then you have this Daniel's 70th week, that seven-year time period yet in the future. And what was in between the 69th and 70th week of Daniel is the church age. Now, how long is the church age going to last? Well, I think God's very specific on many things. But I want to show you a few more things and then bring this to a conclusion. Back in Revelation chapter number 20, we see another time given in the Bible. <clears throat> Revelation 20. The Bible says, verse number one, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. <clears throat> and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Verse number four. The Bible says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath, hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. In verse number seven, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So here we see over and over and over and over again, a thousand years. <clears throat> so there is a time coming in the future and this follows the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, a thousand-year reign where he, will, where he will rule and reign on this earth from Jerusalem. So a thousand years. Say, is that real? Does that really mean a thousand years? Well, yes, it does. It repeats it so many times, and there's no other way to take it. It's, it is a thousand years. When God speaks of time in the book of Revelation, it is very clear and to the point. Now, with that in mind, we have a thousand-year time period of peace coming on the earth when Christ rules and reigns. Now, we're going to go back to 2 Peter. In 2 Peter, Peter makes a statement, which is quite interesting. And many people have different ideas what it means. Verse number 8 of chapter 3, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. So, some people will say this simply means that time has no effect on God. And that would be absolutely true. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. So, time means nothing to God. A thousand years is as a day. Time means absolutely nothing to God. God has no beginning. He has no end. Time has no effect on Him. He's the one that made time. He lives outside of time. But yet... He has given man a time clock. And God, in his sovereignty, when he created Adam and everything that he made, he created Adam on the sixth day. And in six days, he made everything, everything that is, whether it be visible or invisible, whether it be thrones, principalities, dominions, everything. That includes the angels, that includes everything visible or invisible, in six literal days. And on the seventh day, he rested. And Peter makes it a point that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. Well, why did God make a seven-day week? Why not a ten-day week? Why not a five-day week? You know, why not a three-day week? Why seven? Well, God is working on a 7,000-year calendar. On the seventh day, after God 
created for six days. The seventh day, the Bible says he rested. It wasn't because God was tired. God just ceased from his works. That's what it means to rest. He's, he's, there was a cessation of his creation. He stopped creating and he rested. He just ceased from creating. And there's coming a time when there's going to be a rest a rest for the people of God. That rest is going to be the thousand-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. There will be peace on this earth, and Jesus Christ will rule from Jerusalem. And notice it's for a thousand years. So if day seven is a thousand years, wouldn't it make sense that every day would be a thousand years? Because it says here a day is with the Lord is a thousand years. Now, Bishop Usher, years ago, and you can check this out for yourself, he did research back through genealogies, and he determined through his labor, which was very extensive, that Adam was created in the year 404 B.C. Now, is he 100% dead spot on? I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I never made an attempt like that. Others have has done it. They have little discrepancy with what Usher had, but they're all pretty close. But just go by what Bishop Usher came up with. 4,004 years B.C. is when Adam was created by God. Now, you can look on the internet and you can type into Google, when was Jesus born? What year was he born? And scholars claim anywhere from 6 B.C. to 4 B.C., somewhere along there. And there's, there, they don't know for sure. But if that's the case, if he was born in 4 B.C., and Bishop Usher says Adam was created in 4004 B.C., now Jesus lived, you know, he, he actually died. You know, some people say it was, it was uh, 28 A.D. Some people say it was 30 A.D., and again, there's discrepancies with that. Who knows for sure? But either way, Jesus has been, you know, you have to go back to his birth. It's over 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> and his death would be a little less than 2,000 years ago. But if you go back to the beginning, back to creation with Adam, you're looking roughly 6,000 years, which pretty much fits in to what Peter's saying here about a day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. So if God is working on a 7,000 year calendar, then we're getting close to the end of time. And without even knowing this stuff, with What's going on in the world right now, it sure looks like something is up. And if you can't see that, I wonder what, uh, what you're paying attention to. Now I'm going to flip to the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter number 5. And we're going to go to the last verse of Hosea chapter 5. And then we're going to look at the first two verses of Hosea chapter 6. Verse 15 says, I will go and return to my place. Well, who's the I in this verse? Well, this is the Lord. Now, when someone says, I'm going to go and return to my place, it's obvious that he left his place. He came from there, came to where he's at now, and he's going to go back to where he came from. So the Lord is saying, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Now, what offense is that talking about? Well, that's talking about the Jews. Peter, when he preached at Pentecost, he rebuked the Jews because he said, you have killed the Prince of Glory. He said, You're, you cried out to crucify him. And that was their offense. Now, God's saying, I'm going to go return to my place until they, and that's the Jews, acknowledge their offense and seek my face. And then you see, in their affliction, they will seek me early. 
But what's their affliction? Their affliction is that time known as Jacob's trouble. And the great tribulation is that three and a half years that follows when the beast sets in the temple and declares himself to be God and then seeks to destroy the remnant of Israel. And you read Revelation 12. That's the dragon is after the woman to destroy the woman, which is Israel. So here we see God says he's going to return to his place till the Jews acknowledge their sin and seek him. And in their affliction, they will seek me early. So that's during the, the great tribulation. They're going to seek after him. And look what the Jews say. Chapter 6, verse 1. Come, and let us return to the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Okay, after two days, will he revive us. So after two days. And then it says, in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Now, God said he's going to go back to where he came from, which was heaven. He's the, the Lord from heaven. And he's went back to heaven. He ascended up into heaven. And again, there's a little disagreement. Was it 28 AD? Was it 30 AD? Well, one or the other. Scholars will argue about that. But he said he's going to go there, and after two days, he's going to revive Israel, after 2,000 years, and then the third day, so that would be at the beginning of the 1,000 years, because he is going to rule and reign for 1,000 years in Jerusalem. So that means after 2,000 years, after he's gone back to heaven, he's coming again, and he's going to revive Israel. In Romans chapters 9, 10, 11, it talks about God dealing with Israel in the future. And he claims that all Israel shall be saved. And that's what's going to happen at the end of the 2,000 years that are just about up. Now, when, when would this two-day period start counting? What would be when he returned to heaven? So either 28 A.D. or 30 A.D. Add 2,000 to 28, you get 2028. Or if you add it to 30, you get 2030. Now the thing of it is, we know as believers that the rapture happens seven years prior to Christ's coming. So you can take seven off of 2028 and you get 2021. If you do the same to 2030, then you get 2023. But to me, and if people say, well, you're a heretic for giving out a date of the possibility of when Jesus is coming, I would say, well, God throughout his word has given knowledge to people to understand the time of things and the timing of things. God allowed Daniel to understand by books, by simply reading the book of Jeremiah, he understood there were 70 years that were going to be accomplished by them being taken captive to Babylon. 70 years, and that's exactly what it was. Then God revealed to Daniel that there was 70 weeks were determined, and it was 69 weeks until Jesus came, until Messiah came. And now there's that one week that's remaining, which we call Daniel's 70th week, and it's seven years. We understand, according to the book of Revelation, that that seven-year time period is divided into two. It's divided that midpoint, and according to Daniel 9.27, that midpoint is when the abomination of desolation takes place. And after that takes place, there's three and a half years until Jesus comes again. So the timing is all there. He tells us there's a thousand years coming in the future where after the battle of Armageddon, Satan's going to be bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Jesus is going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. And Peter tells us that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years. And it just so happens that about 6,000 years ago, Adam was created and 2,000 years ago, 
Christ ascended back into heaven. So everything is lining up for either 2021 or 2023 to be the timing of the rapture based on Jesus coming back in either 2028 or, or 2030 at the revelation when he saves all of Israel and comes in the battle of Armageddon. And he's going to judge this world. So you can say what you want, but to me it's clear God has given us a outline of the time. To me it's clear and it's been clear for years. God is working on a 7,000 year calendar. And people that say that the rapture could happen at any moment, I don't believe that. I believe God has his, his feast, which are set times, appointed times that have to take place on specific days. And if, if you study it out, you'll find out that where it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, referring to the, the rapture, that is also, that phrase, those three things, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, refers to that 100th trumpet blast that ends the Feast of Trumpets. This year, the Feast of Trumpets is on September 7th and 8th. So on September 8th, when those Jews are blowing that last trumpet, we may hear the trumpet from heaven, that last trumpet blast, and we'll be out of here. And I, I make a prediction. It's, it's just so simple. And unless, unless Jesus died a different year, and again, that's, that's the whole thing. There's a discrepancy about you know, his date of his birth. There's also discrepancy about the date of his death. <clears throat> but if Jesus was born between 6 B.C. and, and 4 B.C., and the claims he was, he was crucified in, in 28 A.D. or 30 A.D., then with those two, if those two dates of his death, one, if one of those is correct, he is either coming this year or in 2023. But I can guarantee you we're not going to be here past 2023. To me, that's, that's clear. Because God says after two days, he's going to revive Israel. And in the third day, he's going to come. The way things are going in this world, you can see we're getting very close to the end. So many will say, oh, well, no man knows the day or the hour. And yet within the context of that in Matthew 24, it is clear that it is at the door. And you can't know the exact uh, day or hour because it's again that refers to the feast of trumpets and people can argue all they want but I'm telling you what I heard a man the other day and he, he made a statement and I thought but he still doesn't see the, the clarity of it and I'll put back to Matthew 24 he made the statement that you know no man knows the day or the hour he said but if if the, the rapture happened at the end of the tribulation well then we would know because we know it's three and a half years from the abomination of desolation. Well, the thing of it is, that verse where it says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my, my father only, that day is talking about the day when Jesus appears. In verse, verse 30, it says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So that's when Jesus comes, and they're going to see the Son of Man coming in clouds, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this is not the rapture. This is the gathering of God's elect, the Jews, at the end of the tribulation. And we know that from that time of the abomination of desolation is three and a half years. So anyone alive, when they see that abomination of desolation, they can begin counting three and a half years. And they would have a really good idea of what time that's going to take place. Down here, it says in verse 33, So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. And again, this isn't talking about the rapture. This is talking about the revelation. And yet, the Bible says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall all the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, as the day of, days of Noah were, God told Noah the exact timing of the flood. But the ones that did not know the timing were the lost people. Notice in verse 38, For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark and knew not till the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When Noah entered into that ark, he knew the flood was coming. The other people didn't understand it. They didn't understand that they were going to be taken in judgment. But Noah was told seven days and then God was going to send the flood. So God does reveal things, time to people. And right here, just like I believe when Daniel read Jeremiah, there it was right out for anyone to see 70 years. And Daniel read it and he understood it. And right here in Hosea, God says, I'm, I'm going to go and return to my place. So that's Jesus going back after he was crucified and rose from the dead and he ascended back into heaven and he's going to be there until the Jews acknowledge their sin and seek God's face and when are they going to do that in their affliction in the tribulation period which is coming which at the end of the tribulation period three and a half years after the abomination of desolation then he is going to come and set up his kingdom. And that's what that third day is in verse 2 of chapter 6. He says, After two days will he revive us. So 2,000 years. And in that third day, the thousand year reign of Christ, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. So it's clear. But again, I think a lot of, a lot of people are very prideful when it comes to things. They won't acknowledge what... To me, looking at this repeatedly, it, to me, this is just surface stuff. Now, this is just stuff that, that God has opened up. It's as clear as day. It's as clear as John 3, 16. So, Jesus could, could be coming this September. And if he does not come on the 8th of September this year, then 2023, he will be coming and again, unless unless 30 AD is wrong for the death, and I don't, I don't believe that it is. I believe you know, most most people agree with 30 AD. Some say 28. I hope the ones that say 28 are correct because if they are, according to this, and God is very precise when God says 69 weeks till the time that that Messiah would come, 483 years, and it was to the very day, then I can't. Help but think that these two days, these 2,000 years, is exactly that. So, that to me is clear. If you think differently, let me know in the comments what you think. God bless you.